Hello there, this is Cookies. I've got turn three of It's a Dry Heat, playing as Middle-Aged Naba. So let's go ahead and look for it. So something I forgot to cover last turn was I put a bid out for Fordo Boggett's Elite Warriors. That's why we were so poor. So we got some Mercs. We actually managed to win the bid for the Mercs, which was also important. I think we spent 500-ish gold trying to get them. So hopefully they can pay for themselves. But let's take a look at our first expansion. So now sometimes what what many people recommend is instead of forward deploying like I did, you back deploy, and then these little different groups of infantry will spread out more, and you can kind of kill them one at a time. Uh, that probably would have been a good call here. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that my formation stayed good. So even if they've got the same combat speed, when you do attack closest with a line, uh, maybe I could have done hold and attack closest, but sometimes they'll, they'll, the line will collapse a little bit. And so I just wanted to make sure I met them with a the line. You can see it's already turned into a box. So... But these Sacreds with our Bless uh, can get up to 19 defense, which is pretty nice. They have a big old shield that helps them out a little bit, and a Bronze Scimitar. So they, they should be fairly good against Indies, and they should make okay Elf Raiding Parties going into the future. Alright, so let's take a look at the turn here. So we've got two Caribs now. Uh, still going for Evo 2 and Thom 1. And we've noticed a couple of things. So we're going to send this guy over to Umfolia, see what's going on here. And we're also moving into this wasteland because we see Amazons and Griffin Riders. And what that means is it's highly likely to be a province with the Garnet's uh, cross paths. So, and Garnet Amazons get fire and blood. So this would be a way for us to break into blood, potentially. Which is really strong on Nabah because you get a lot of the Ubar summons. So, actually, let's look at blood. So you get Feast for Ghouls, you can get Efreets, or pretty strong mages. Um, I think. Uh, and then Shaitan. Alright, yeah, so Freets are pretty strong mages. I could probably pull them up at some point for a review. Uh, you get the Gula, who's a pretty cool commander. I, I think uh, Blood 1, Death 1. And so it can help you break into vampire lords and can also help you do a lot of blood hunting. And help expand that. Uh, opens you up to the Shaitan Paths, and you have a lot of fire magic on your nation, so you can break into the, the boosters for that. Getting Shaitan is would be very huge for us. It would allow us to get uh, corruption online as a mechanic, and so we could siege people's forts and steal commanders from them. And yeah, so this is a big deal. Um, we're going to have to be fairly careful to hide this until we're ready for it. We're Because the, the Garnets are blood one, and through previous blitzes, I've learned blood one hunting is just not very good. So what I'll probably do is hide the fact that this is a thing until I'm able to defend it and also until I have Construction 5, and I'll use the Sanguine Dousing Rods, and I'll probably spin up the Blood Economy then, is what I'm thinking I'll do. And I'll want to be... I'll want to run down Construction at some point anyways to get a bunch of the Research Boosters, because with the Gula, you can potentially get the, uh, the Death Research Booster. You have the Paths on many of your mages, for lanterns and alquils, 
I forget if there's a glamour booster as well. And so you can really uh, juice your research by going down construction. I think for me, I just want to make sure I have something else first, which is probably running decently far down evocation. And then we can run down construction and then maybe we can run down blood while we build up those blood slaves. So that's kind of what I'm thinking so far. So now it's just about making sure we can try to get decent expansion. I've been chatting with Balin. And if he's to be believed, uh, he's running a big old hell bless down there in the caves as Abyssia. So I'm very concerned <laughs> about uh, him popping up in Omfolia. Because I would really like to get Omfolia. And... So I'd like to get the full circle for the King's Tomb Desert so I can hide the fact that I got these uh, Amazons. It would be really nice if I could get Dragon Ridge as well because then I could safely blood hunt maybe in Panic Raider's Bounty and hide that kind of in between because it's got good population for blood hunting. Maybe some other areas too. We'll have to see. But I definitely need to hide it until I'm ready to defend myself. There are many factions on this map that would love to get their hands on Garnets and would be willing to fight me over them. So, and it's close enough to my capital that it would probably mean I'd have to die for them to effectively get it. So, we'll see. In terms of the Mercs, we're heading them down here. So, we've got a stay behind troops and we've got hold and attack closest this is not a good script uh it'll work against this because it's got militia heavy infantry and light infantry so i only have to worry about javelins so the the idea of stringing out the enemy troops does work here so that's why we've got the stay behind troops and hold and attack closest here but generally speaking, with an all-melee force, you just want to be forward deployed and be on attack. Just be very aggressive, unless you're worried about your commander getting flanked. And then for recruitment, we're getting a Mukarib. The Mukaribs are nice during expansion. So there, there's a trade-off between the Mukarib and the Carib. So the Carib is nice because he's... He can... <coughs> excuse me. Because he can bless your sacreds and he's stealthy. So you can move around with your sacreds in a elf-like manner, which is pretty nice. Especially when you're thinking about elfing someone. So the Carib might be better in a first war for leading bands of sacreds around. But the Mukarib is holy too and has 21 hit points. So I'd say he might be better during expansion. Because he can take a stray arrow and probably not die, which is really nice. And his holy two path means he can bless up to 10 sacreds due to how uh, bless works. For instance, because the, the AoE on bless is increased by 5 for every extra level. So instead of blessing for five squares, you get to bless for ten squares. Which, considering these guys, I think pack two to a square? Yeah, so you get two of these guys per square. So if you're leading ten sacreds, a holy one can probably do it. Uh, depending on how he aims it, he might need two or three casts, one for himself, a couple for the sacreds. And that's generally what you can get with hold and attack. With the Mukarib, you probably only need two blesses. You need one for the troops and one for himself, and then you're probably okay. So they can be pretty nice for leading a little bit larger expansion parties into tougher indies or indies with a lot of bows, because the Carib is vulnerable to getting sniped. He's nine hit points with three protection. He has a headpiece, um, but I hesitate to even call this good enough to be a hat. So, but, uh, yeah, so that's what we're doing for this turn. Can't get too many of our sacreds, but our sacreds are pretty good for expansion, so we're going to lean on them. And then we're going to go ahead and pick up a scout here, 
and that uses up all the resources here, so not really getting to take advantage of the foreign recruitment yet. And I think that's it. So I'll go ahead and see you in turn three. Have a good one.